Where would you see rivalry to be at its height when Sri Lanka play another country? Interesting, because I, I don't think we, we still see ourselves as up there. We are very much the underdogs. I could be wrong for saying this, but I, I think we are. Uh, and so we have these brief sort of periods when, when we shine, and then we go back. So it's always. So oh. <laughs> but so but in we all, I think. Yeah, well, yeah. But in our case, it's endemic. So, so you know, we're always pushing, pushing up, pushing up, and then, then sliding back down. So we don't really see ourselves as kind of, you know, we don't, we don't go into these matches thinking we're fighting a war. You know, we really don't. I think we're very much the underdogs, and when we do sneak a win, then we're rather happy with ourselves. Well, that's marvelous, actually. That's the way it should be. I don't think we should take it too seriously. If, if I could just, with Ashok's permission, one of my favorite experiences of cricket nationalism involved a Sri Lankan colleague of mine in the UN, uh, who had migrated from Sri Lanka to Australia, and not just become an Australian citizen, but an Australian diplomat. And he was the one with whom I was watching on television, live, the 1996 World Cup final between Sri Lanka and Australia. So I was very curious as to who he'd support. And inevitably, as the match began, you know, he was a very correct Australian diplomat working for the UN. He was rooting for Australia. But it was fabulous to watch as the match evolved. The inner Sri Lankan emerged. <laughs> <laughs> and there he was rooting for his, uh, for yeah, his yeah. motherland. Yeah. And when Sri Lanka won, he was the happiest person in the place. And the, the footnote to the story is, after all of this experience, he gives up the Australian citizenship, goes back to Sri Lanka, and ends up as Sri Lanka's foreign secretary. Oh. There's a national... <laughs> <laughs> can, I, can I go back to something yes. you said? You said that yes, sir. You used the word exotic for Indian batsmanship, especially Ranjit Singhji. He never played a Christian stroke in his well, life. That's what I was going to say. You take... <laughs> yeah, do you want to tell the rest of my story? I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> he also, somebody also, that was a, that, it was interesting that that was a Yorkshire bowler who said that, called Ted Wainwright. And I think he just must have been totally puzzled by him. Ranjit invented the leg glance, didn't he? Well, yeah. that's what they, at least from off stump or off yeah, side. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I presume people nicked it down there without, you know, called it a leg glance. But he, he would obviously do it from the air. And, and somebody, and Lord Harris, who was not a noble figure, in my view. But well, who was Lord, governor of Bombay. Lord, though he was. Yeah. Yes, he was the man who said, um, the professional cricketer is a very fine person, but my God, thank God we haven't got one as captain, you see. Was, the same thing happens within the society as between societies. Well said. And, um, but he said <laughs> in the 1920s, when England lost so six or eight test matches consecutively, he said that Ranjit Singhji had confused England's batsmen by his conjurer's tricks. <laughs> See, so, I mean, even he comes and scores hundreds for England, but he's doing his damage from the inside. <laughs>